Hello everyone, Steve Goodwin here with my anchor test video number 151. Today we're going to look at my testing of anchor holding power on a seafloor with a very steep slope. Now I took some very careful measurements using the GPS and the depth sounder right in the area where I was testing and found that the gradient is 2.8 to 1. Now when you're talking about a grade the 2.8 figure in this case is the horizontal measurement and then the 1 is the vertical measurement. That works out to be just under 20 degrees, which is what this angle is set to here. That also happens to correspond perfectly, same angle as a theoretical scope of 3 to 1. Now you might wonder how can 3 to 1 be the same as 2.8 to 1? And the answer is when you're talking about anchor scope, the larger number is not the horizontal distance, it is the hypotenuse. That's the length of your road, assuming it was stretched out nice and tight. That's how you come up with the angle. Again, uh, it's just under 20 degrees. Oh, and for reference, I'll mention that some of the steepest streets in San Francisco are right about the same angle. I think the very steepest was Bradford Street, and the very top portion of it, the last little bit, goes up to about 22 degrees. So if you've ever been on a street like that, you'll know that it seems like it's almost straight up as you're trying to hike it. But this is the actual uh, angle. And you're going to find that there's lots of tendency for the seafloor, which in this case is, is sand. It tends to just slide on downhill. So we might be very close to that particular uh, sands maximum angle that it can pile. So I tested a total of seven anchors in this seabed, but the first five ended up being a bust. That was on day one, and I really didn't know what to expect. Ended up using anchors that were too large. The 20 pounders turned out to produce more holding power than the test boat could pull when going in the uphill direction. And I wanted to set that as a baseline for the maximum and then compare it to the outbound or downslope pulls. Uh, that's the worst case scenario. But again, since I couldn't measure accurately what they were capable of upslope, I pretty much scrapped all those tests. Um, also that first day, I didn't know how deep to go and just what to expect down there. So on day two, armed with much better knowledge and smaller anchors, uh, this was in a 12-pound Viking and an 11-pound genuine CQR. I was able to get uh, a full spectrum of data, meaning I could accurately measure their holding power going uphill, cross the slope, and downhill. I did use very heavy chain for these size of anchor, so chain catenary is a major factor, and it, it has to be, because there's no way you can anchor down slope with little or no chain. It just the anchor toe never gets a chance to dig in. So unless you're into big heavy chain or uh, a kellet, a large kellet, downslope anchoring just does not work at all. Um, the chain I selected was my normal long chain that I call it. It's uh, 80 feet of 5 uh, backed with some nylon. I chose 35 foot depths for all the tests and 105 feet of total road. So again, it's a three to one scope. Let's get out on the water and I'll just show you exactly what happened. Okay, we'll start off with the 12 pound Viking for some up slope pulling. Uh, the anchors are difficult to set um, properly here. I've got to pretty much just drop them straight down in order to get the correct depth. I was shooting for 35 feet, so each of these sets uh, they'll be preceded by the anchor sort of spinning around. Now the anchor is uh, digging in deeper as I ramp up power. And now finally here we are. This was, I'll call this the maximum hold. There's a little bit of motion, but I still call that usable holding power, 735 pounds. Uh, then when I bumped it up to the next increment, that was, I think, 820 pounds. Anchor starts moving faster. Here we see the camera tethers have been captured. Uh, it's pulling the camera down in. Anchor is fully buried, but things, uh, the anchor has started moving briskly at that point. Here's take two for that upslope pull, and it was exactly the same as the first. I cut out uh, most of it, just showing you the aftermath. The camera tether has been captured. It's pulled the camera right down to the surface. Uh, again, same thing, 735 pounds. Okay, now we'll do some cross slope, or parallel to the contour line, 
holding checks. And certainly with this low a scope, even with this heavy chain, uh, the chain will be lifted at the anchor at its uh, final usable holding numbers that we'll see here. And here we are. It's uh, 565 pounds. It's still creeping forward just ahead, but I feel that is usable holding power. And then at the next increment, it was 660 pounds of thrust. Things started moving faster. Never released, but it just kept moving, so I chopped the power uh, shortly thereafter. This is take two for the cross slope hold, and it was exactly the same as before. Um, notice that the sand particles, as they are disrupted and start moving, they're going to be mostly flowing perpendicular to the direction of the anchor's travel, so they're flowing down slope. Also, a lot of critters in this area. There's multiple crabs and lots and lots of fish of various species. But again, same exact results. In fact, this uh, seabed proven to be extremely repeatable. Okay, and now we're on to the downslope pull. Unfortunately, the camera tether got a little bit fouled here, so we're not going to see the main part of the fluke. Um, maybe it's a good thing because we do get a real good clear peek at the chain as it lifts up out of the seabed uh, at the higher pulling numbers. So here's 135 pounds of pull, and the anchor starts moving, and it never stops. The chain does emerge a bit, so that's your guess as good as mine whether it would have stayed uh, engaged if I'd left it on this power setting uh, indefinitely. But I'm going to go ahead and call it uh, this, this setting, 135, let's call that usable holding power. And then next, when we bump it up to 165, we'll start to see the anchor moving more, more of the chain emerges. Uh, now, just behind the camera tether, we can see the shackle is clear of the seabed. I don't have a way of measuring how high up the chain is angled. Uh, certainly, at some point, it's going to be above horizontal. And combined with this down slope, it's just obviously too much for the anchor, and it starts to uh, starts to, to release. Note that all the sand that's moving is moving down slope. That's that's pretty interesting. It's all moving same direction as the anchor. And then uh, toward the end here, I do chop the power because this is a bit of a risk. What happens is if I keep going, very shortly the anchor gets so deep that it just takes off, and there's no stopping it. The anchor will just end up. Uh, pointing straight down, all the road and everything. Here's take two for that down slope pull. Once again, the camera tether was fouled, so we will not see the most, the majority of the fluke as it buries, but that's pretty standard procedure. I'm sure it's just gone out of sight. We do get to see the chain attach point perfectly, however. Uh, same power setting as last time, 135 here, and a similar amount of motion, but there's more anchors showing. Uh, maybe that debris on the bottom was a small factor, but overall, very similar result. Uh, when bumped up to 165 pounds, the uh, motion increases, and uh, still more anchor shows. We do make it up to 195, and then starts things start to take off. But once again, I chop the power to avoid this uh, kind of almost a disaster of having the anchor and road pointing straight down in very deep water. So here's an example of that near disaster of pulling too far on these downslope pulls. This is a 21 pound Spade S60 I'm using that same road which consists of 80 feet of 5 sixteenths chain. So this road and anchor combination is well over 100 pounds. And we'll see once it takes off, it doesn't stop. It just slides on down the hill. It's the chain catenary that's mostly pulling this. Uh, the boat motion is now stopped at this point. And I could tell kind of what was going on from the surface, but there's nothing I could do about it. The, the anchor just took off sliding down the hill, and off it goes down into the abyss until it was vertical. Ended up taking quite a bit of time and a bit of a struggle. There's no winch on board, so I had to just sort of incrementally pull this up by hand, um, kind of nudging the boat into shallower water for a break, and eventually got it up, but certainly something to avoid in the future. Now we're on to the 11-pound Genuine Bruce. Uh, first will be the upslope pulls, and it was 315 pounds of good, pretty solid holding, and then at 380 it was moving faster. I'm going to show you a little longer sequence just so that we can be entertained by this crab who is very curious. In fact, he's latched onto the camera tether here, and as the anchor starts moving faster, so will the crab. He's actually going to go for a little ride.
And now finally he's had enough and let's go. Here's take two for that same uphill pull with that 11 pound Bruce and it was once again the same results. 315 was uh, what I call usable holding and then at 380 it started moving faster. Next is the cross slope or parallel to the contour line pull. It's the same 11 pound Bruce. I'm not sure if you can see it the same as I do when I edit this in high definition, but it's easy to see which direction uphill is, again, by the motion of these sand particles that will tend to be moving down slope. So it was 195 pounds of what I call usable, usable holding power, and then at a higher 240, it starts moving faster and faster. Here's take two for that same cross slope test, and once again, it was the exact same result. Uh, 195 pounds for what I call usable holding power, and then at 240, it was moving continuously and faster. And now we're on to the Bruce with the down slope pull. Here we've got 100 pounds of thrust applied. And at the top of the screen, you can just see the first few links of chain. They are just above the seafloor or maybe just laying on the seafloor. So there's still some catenary, probably less than horizontal pull at the anchor attach point. But then with more thrust, here's 120 pounds, we see the chain gets a little taller or higher above the seafloor. And then by 135, uh, definitely pulling um, at an angle other than the seafloor slope, probably something above horizontal. And sure enough, out comes the anchor. All right, let's analyze some of these numbers and images that we saw. First of all, for the upslope, upslope poles for both anchors, the road was just laying right on the seabed. If you recall, the angle of the seafloor sea was the same as the scope. So we had basically infinite scope or no upward angle of pull from the seafloor for both anchors. So they were at their best. We had 735 for the Viking and five or 315 for the Bruce, and that is not an unexpected result. The Bruce is often a much lower holding power anchor than more modern designs. However, on the downslope portion, this is where chain catenary is a huge factor, and they were actually quite similar. The Bruce was holding about 100 pounds, and the Viking was just a bit more at 135. And I believe we have a bigger discrepancy there with the Viking because both anchors just were reacting to the upward pull from the road. And uh, the, 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 the chain catenary doesn't know what it's attached to. It just pulls up with a certain amount of boat force. And once it achieved a certain angle, it just pulled both anchors out. Looks to me like it was around 130 pounds somewhere in there. And that's when the, uh, that road angle got real steep. Another thing that I found interesting was just how close the holding power was for the Viking anchor between the cross slope and the up slope. I would have predicted um, a bigger spread there, but it was, uh, well, it was 565 pounds cross slope and then 735 up slope. So apparently with that heavy a chain uh, at only three to one scope, uh, catenary was still providing a good boost. And again, uh, nearly as good of, of, of holding as the upslope. Speaking of the upslope boost or really good holding, um, this situation would lend itself quite well to using a shore tie, especially if you didn't have the very heavy chain or a kellet. Um, these anchors are really, really brilliant on that upslope. So you could, in theory, do a shore tie, probably better with two shore ties so that your uh, boat just isn't hanging in the middle of a taut, a taut line, uh, the loads will be astronomical whenever you have just a single shore tie. Uh, a, a double shore tie in a V will, will Im improve the geometry a lot and not put such huge loads on the anchor. Another factor that I think might be noteworthy or might be true is that in addition to the poor angles of pull when going down slope, We've also got the problem of the material itself 
wanting to slide downhill. If you've ever done a walk up a sand dune or perhaps a gravel scree field, you know when you take a step up and then push down with your foot, you end up sliding backwards about half of that step. Uh, the material is just wanting to go downhill due to gravity all the time, and it doesn't take much to get it to go. So I think that's what's happening with these anchors in the downslope uh, pull. Upslope, it's the opposite. Um, a normal flat horizontal seabed, when an anchor pulls out, it just has to pull, pop up and, and then start dragging along. But on an upslope, I think you almost have to be lifting and pushing material uphill. It's got to help holding power. To how much degree? Not really sure, and I'm not really sure how to test that. So you might be wondering, why in the world would anybody want to anchor on such a steep slope? And the answer is, for that area, there really isn't any other choice. That particular spot is dear to my heart. I've been going there for literally my entire life. Here I am as an infant in 1969 on Mother's Day. And then here, more than 40 years later, I have my daughter on the exact same beach. I've been recreating uh, my whole life. Uh, not a year goes by usually without me uh, going there at least once. Uh, water skiing, picnics, fishing, you name it. I've even taken Panope there and I have anchored her um, for several nights there. Also put her on the beach for a scrub. So this is a place that I'm going to keep going and yep, I'm going to have to anchor there. Uh, certainly a shore tie could be a, a good option, but uh, one, one event in particular, um, I hid there from a good southerly blow. It was blowing up to 30 knots, and I was positioned such that the anchor was receiving a side pull or a cross slope pull. It was a 46 pound ultra anchor, and I don't believe it really moved at all. Um, again, the, the pull, the angle of pull was cross slope, with the exception of when Panope's bow would be swinging side to side, it probably did get some down slope pull. Hey, uh, so in this shot, we can see that there's a broad uh, oyster bed there. This is low tide, and that's that shelf I was talking about earlier. And it would appear that that shelf would just continue out, but nope, it's a very steep slope. Panope's in maybe 30 or 40 feet of water. And this illustrates exactly why you can't just keep using more and more scope. Uh, the problem is, is that an onshore wind will have the boat grounding. Okay, that's all I got for the steep slope anchoring concept. Tune in next month as I test this Anchorplex anchor out of Spain. Uh, what's noteworthy, to my mind, is that it is constructed entirely of flat plate and only a couple small tabs are breaking this flat plane. What it means is when it is disassembled, it could be stored potentially underneath the mattress of your bunk and you might not even feel it. So it could be a real game changer in terms of a backup or a spare anchor. So again, tune in and we'll see if it can perform as well as some of the other anchors. All right, as always, anchor safely, so long. Thank <laughs> you.